Kelly Ortberg, the new Boeing chief executive, is seen by many as Boeing's last hope to save a giant on the brink of decline. He arrives at a time when the company is suffering a humiliating setback and a huge loss in its space ambitions, with the Starliner program failing to complete its most important test flight. This left him with a life-or-death question. Should the Starliner program be canceled to save a dying Boeing, especially when NASA doesn't want it to happen? Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let us subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. It's no coincidence that Boeing engineers lobbied NASA to allow a crewed Starliner return, even though they had yet to find the root cause of the spacecraft's propulsion system failure. Clearly, it is so humiliating for the giant aerospace company when its vehicle has to rely on its upstart rival to carry astronauts home. However, the issue is not just a matter of reputation, but also a balance between national duty and strained cash reserves. Should or shouldn't continue to pour money into the Starliner's project. While the aerospace community is calling for the abolition of this wasteful program for Boeing's newly appointed CEO, Kelly Ortberg, things don't seem so simple should keep Starliner alive? Before Ortberg joined Boeing, executives had vowed to honor the company's contract to ferry astronauts to the International Space Station for NASA. This accommodates NASA's purpose in the commercial crew program, meaning having two vehicles to ensure redundancy in the urgent case. Currently, SpaceX Dragon is the only safe and reliable vehicle to ferry astronauts to space, other than U.S. rivals Russia and China. This partly explains why NASA has gone to great lengths to help Boeing get here, regardless of delays the vehicle has encountered. Take, for example, Starliner's first crewed test flight, which has been delayed for seven years. It should have been canceled until the persistent issues of the hardware and software were fixed. But NASA cut corners in the procedure by downplaying the helium leak, which was found just hours before launch, and then allowing the spacecraft to launch. NASA's determination to keep the program is also proven proven through Bill Nelson's high confidence. 100% sure Starliner would fly astronauts again. Yet officials said the propulsion system had a design vulnerability Boeing must address before its next mission. Ortberg recently voiced support for continuing the Starliner program after the craft is sent back from the space station without people on board, according to Nelson. He expressed to me an intention that they will continue to work the problems once Starliner is back safely and that we will have our redundancy and our crewed access to the space station. The NASA administrator said, Analysts believe that Boeing will likely continue to support the Starliner program, partly due to the company's experience with challenges in other sectors, particularly its defense business. In the future, Starliner will target private sector customers such as the contract with Blue Origin and Sierra Space in the project, Low Earth Orbit Space Station, Orbital Reef. Nevertheless, there is no guarantee of a long-term commitment if Starliner's troubles persist especially when its upcoming return mission fails. Boeing also will not make any long-term promises to sustain the program if it continues to lose money. To get a human rating certification, NASA hasn't ruled out the possibility of one more test flight. At that point, Boeing could cost about $400 million, based on charges the company booked to redo an earlier test flight. In 2022, the company already had to repeat an uncrewed mission at a cost of nearly $500 million, not to mention $125 million in new losses stemming from delays to the crewed flight test and testing of Starliner's glitchy propulsion system, bringing the total cost up to $1.6 billion. Those $1.6 billion also include $762 million operating loss during the first six months of 2024, slightly worse than a year earlier. Do they ultimately exit the program because it's too complicated and Boeing can't recover its investment because the other guy can do it better? said Robert Spingarn, an analyst with Melius Research. It could happen. With an initial funding of $2.6 billion, SpaceX's Crew Dragon has flown 10 crewed missions for NASA. The contract then was up to $4.9 billion, thanks to more Crew Dragon missions to make up for Boeing's delays. In contrast, Starliner so far has yet to be certified, even though Boeing has spent more than half of its $4.5 billion NASA contract, including an additional $300 million more notably, NASA has committed $5.1 billion to Boeing for the Starliner program, and the agency has already paid out most of that funding. That means most of the contract money went into Boeing's pockets without any good results. 
While the Boeing Starliner is still authorized to fly future operational missions to the ISS, it remains unclear when and for how long those missions will take place. To make that possible, first and foremost, NASA must trigger a more formal independent investigation to classify the situation with the Starliner crew flight test as a mishap or a loss of mission. Such a determination might trigger longer delays in Starliner's next flight, leading to more losses. NASA and Boeing must also manage to detect problems within the propulsion system, which they spent the last two months testing with no satisfactory answer. Things could be more complicated, as the control jets which are located on the Starliner service module will jettison from the crew section of the spacecraft before re-entry and then will burn up over the Pacific Ocean. Engineers won't have any chance to get access to the suspect hardware. Bear in mind that the matter of RCS thruster is deemed to be the most persistent problem that the company has to face so far. Two years ago, they tried to introduce a software fix in the propulsion system after the system stopped working as Starliner approached the space station on the OFT-2 mission. Unfortunately, that didn't work because the problem lay elsewhere as engineers discovered during in-orbit testing this summer. NASA officials concluded there is a small chance that the thrusters could overheat again as Starliner departs the station and flies back to Earth, or perhaps get worse. With the current situation, it is unclear how many problems are hidden inside the system that cannot be detected immediately as the module is gone. This mess could push the CFT-1 mission until at least 2026. Assuming that everything is fine and Starliner can return to the fly crew in 2026, it's impossible for the vehicle to fly all six of its contracted missions at a rate of one per year. NASA has awarded enough contracts to its trusted supplier, SpaceX, to complete all remaining missions to the ISS before it retires in the 2030s. It's difficult to imagine scenarios including NASA prioritizing Starliner over Dragon, or NASA generously helping Boeing in mitigating losses in the current severely constrained budget situation of the national agency. Another solution is that the commercial space stations following the ISS's retirement will open to use by NASA and money making commercial ventures. As I mentioned, Starliner will target this market with the first space station orbital reef of Blue Origin and Sierra Space. However, last year, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and Sierra Space were navigating a potential end to the orbital reef space station partnership. Additionally, to weigh between Starliner and other potential selections on the market like SpaceX Dragon and Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, clearly, the private companies will be more cautious with Boeing-made spacecraft. In short, based on the above analysis, to answer the question, will Boeing's new CEO cancel the Starliner program? Let's listen to experts. Richard Abulafia, an aerospace analyst, believes Ortberg will crunch the numbers and negotiate with NASA to make Starliner viable, although he is not convinced that is the right step. If I were an advisor to Kelly Ortberg, which I'm not, I'd say, for space, well boss, you might want to consider selling it, said Abulafia. As the new CEO of Boeing, Kelly Ortberg has a daunting task ahead of him to steer the company back on track after after years of challenges, Ortberg has free reign to make sweeping changes and unpopular calls, including potentially scuttling the human spaceflight initiative. For Boeing, the losses are significant and would call into question the viability of a business like this if you look at it in a long-term way, said Clayton Swope, deputy director of the Aerospace Security Project with the Center for Strategic and International Studies. So how about you? Do you think Boeing's Starliner should be dumped? Say yes if you agree. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.